We got to talk about this weekend, Dave. This is completely insane. We got UFC, NXT, AEW, SummerSlam. Yep. The Thunderdome. Whatever the hell they're calling it. Uh, the, the Friday Night SmackDown Thunderdome. Yes. Yeah. Very exciting. Yeah. Well, let's start with all you, of them. Well, well, okay. How, what do you think? Do you think SmackDown's going to. The SmackDown rating will be up? Do you think that's enough to. Make I think difference? the SmackDown rating the first week is going to be up a little bit because. Listen. SmackDown, I think, by and large, has been a pretty terrible show. But I am very interested in seeing this Thunderdome. If I look at things purely as a fan... For, 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 two, for two hours? I would... Well, I want to see what's going on. I don't know if I'll watch it for the entire two hours. I mean, maybe I will. I mean, I, it's funny because I... Um, it's more than just a set. It's the, the idea is it's supposed to be an experience through the two hours. So if they do it the way they claim, then it's more than just tuning in at the very beginning, seeing some wacky stuff, and then, nah, I've seen enough. I don't know. We'll I mean, see. it's it's. I I watched tonight, and I watched all the commercials, and it didn't hit me as much. They didn't push as hard as they did when they switched to um, HD. And I remember when they switched to HD, everybody was just like, "Oh, it's going to be a difference maker. It's going to be a difference maker." And it was like a zero difference maker. It actually, now, was a difference maker because they started doing this bullshit zooming and camera cutting and no, 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 no. No, no, no. I'm talking about ratings difference maker. I'm not saying show difference maker. I'm sure that there'll be a show difference maker, but I remember all that hype and, and oh, yeah, the ratings are going to move way up now that they're in HD. And there wasn't, I don't even remember if there was a curiosity bump. There may have been a one or two week curiosity bump, but I don't even think that there was. Or if it was, it was, I know, I remember whatever it was, it was very disappointing. Um, but we'll see. Well, that's I, that's true. But we're we're still talking like they were. They went from a TV show to a TV show, just one that looked a little bit better. This is this is going from they're in the performance center to they're going to be in a giant building with whatever the hell all of this is. This is a big, massive change from what we've been seeing over the last several months. At the end of the day, it's still about. Um you know, you, it's still about angles and Yes, and but what I'm saying is it's more than just we're changing to a sharper image. I mean, this is a yep, whole yep. new everything. Yeah. I don't... Well, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, in theory, the first week should do real well, and then it should probably revert back to normal. I, I My gut is if they think it's going to be a game changer, they're probably going to be disappointed because in the in the long run, it just becomes... it it's It's something new and fresh, but it becomes the new normal very quickly. And in the you know in the end again, what draws is not the fanciness. Although the fanciness can help, um, if the if it's used correctly, like if if the fanciness makes Drew McIntyre into a bigger star, then Drew McIntyre can draw, and then you're helped. Yes, if the fanciness is just there, um, it's going to wear out real quick. So I don't know. I but but watching, I didn't feel like um, the hype of it was that strong to be you know, a big difference maker. It, it may help a little bit, but it, it's not like I expect anything like giant, like a giant number on Friday or anything like that. But we'll see. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Um, SummerSlam, you know, we'll, you know, SummerSlam kind of has to be a good show uh, because they're coming back with another one in a week. So they have to have a really big angle in one of the big matches to bring it, bring the, you know, for something for the, the show on the 30th. So they they've got to do something controversial in, and it's got to be in like, you know, either Strowman and or and Wyatt and or Orton and McIntyre because if it's any other match, it's not you know, that's not worth coming back in a week. I don't know which one it'll be. Uh, so, um, you know, I mean, the one thing with the controversial angles and everything is is that they um, they miss far more than they hit when they do controversial far more than they hit on controversial angles because you're sort of fighting the tide. Because the tide is very much, you know, no bullshit finishes, and they're still in the '80s with the bullshit finishes, and um, you know, they're kind of like, you know, that's that's been one of the problems, really. Well, here's a card for all of the shows this weekend: SummerSlam. We've got Mandy Rose, Sonya Deville, in a hair versus hair match. By the way, do you, do you read all the the, the Sonya Deville stuff? That guy's a frick. Oof, that yes, was, definitely not good. No, no. Um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully they don't let him out. He's, you know, that that was a, you know, there's there's a, there's like here here here's the thing. There's, I think that a lot of professions there there are stalker fans in 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 football. Not as you know, 
in music, in wrestling, and everything like that. Um, and sometimes they're dangerous. I don't think wrestling's got the, uh, you know, cornered the market on this or anything like that. But they do exist in wrestling. And this guy was, uh, you know, really, you know, as the stalk as, as the wrestling stalkers go, he was he was way on the deranged list. I mean, this was, you know, I don't know, I don't know. Um, he, you know, he was. He was trying to, I don't know what he was trying to do. He wanted to kidnap her and he wanted to keep her from doing this match because he was afraid she was going to get her, he was afraid she was going to get her head shaved, I have a feeling. Because that was his idea was to keep her, you know. So he's completely flipped. Um, you know, one of the, you know, weird things about, you know, with Mandy Rose in the, in the room and everything like that is, and nobody blinked an eye, nor should they. But, um, you know, I mean, I remember when this, when Jim Duggan and the Iron Sheik were feuding, everyone does, that was around then. And they were both fired for, um, you know, driving in a car together while they're feuding, while these guys, while these two are, are like literally together all the time. And they're in the middle of this giant angle. And I mean, I, I, it, it basically tells us how far evolved wrestling, you know, some people will hate this. But it, you know, oh, you know, it's like it's it, but it's it's how far evolved wrestling has come. I remember Heenan telling me like when people would be, would rip modern wrestling, um, and you know they go, oh, it was so much better when you had the real heat and all this and that. And Heenan was just like, I was shot at, you know, and I had people try to stab me, and 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 he was shot. There was this time in Chicago where some guy in the building fired like five shots at Bobby Heenan. He missed, but he tried. And, you know, he had fans attack him and all this. And he goes, like, no one attacks me now. Don't tell me that it's like wrestling's gotten worse. It's, it's a lot better. And, and the money was better, too. But, you know, again, people, people want a certain thing, forgetting about, you know. I mean, like, the stuff that I saw when I was a kid at wrestling compared to now, I mean, it's, it's so much more of a healthy environment. Then again, there were nutty fans then, and we've got nutty fans now. But... You know, again, nobody bats an eye. Nobody's going like, oh, my God, how can they do this hair match? They're actually best friends. So it's it, that was really interesting on just how much wrestling has changed. For the rest of the show, we have Braun Strowman versus The Fiend for the Universal title. Does anyone ever get excited about Bray Wyatt matches? Not that I know. I'm sure they're out there. I mean, it's just like... But even if they're out there, I'm not sure they're excited about him and Braun Strowman. Yeah, I mean, Bray Wyatt did have good matches with Brian Danielson. Okay, that was the one guy he really did. But, my God, aside from that, and, um, you know, those the last two with Bray Wyatt and Braun Strowman, I mean, it's like, whoa, why would you want to see another one? We got Bailey versus Asuka and Sasha versus Asuka yeah. with the Raw and SmackDown women's titles on the line. Yeah. Um, the Bailey match comes first. Uh, I, you know, I suspect some storyline stuff out of all this. Um, Oscar's going to have to do two matches. And I wonder if they'll have her do like two long matches or do like a real short one and, and, a, and a medium to long one. I don't know. Got Dominic versus Seth Rollins in a street fight. Yeah. Um, a lot of pressure on Dominic. First pro match and you're in SummerSlam in, in, in a, significant capacity so uh um what a debut paulo cruz and mvp with lashley and shelton banned from ringside anybody expecting that mvp is going to win when cedric alexander shows up and screws paulo cruz oh it's one of the it's it's, it's very possible yeah yeah i could see that one for sure and street profits versus andrade and angel garza for the raw tag titles and McIntyre Norton for the WWE title. Mm -hmm. That is the SummerSlam show. Takeover, as we'll talk about a little bit later on. We have Brizango versus Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch versus Raul Mendoza and Joaquin Wild. So that's this. This will be at this is the six, dark match. Well, it's not. No, it's not a dark match. It's six thirty. It's a pre-show uh, match. Pre-show match. So the interesting thing here is is that um, you know. It, it originally it was okay so so aw in theory starts at six but it, it's probably going to start a little later than that because of it, it's it basically starts whenever the nba game ends so it could be six could be 6 30 it'll be somewhere in there so originally it looked like 
probably you know 30 minutes to an hour of AEW would be unopposed and then the second hour would be going head to head with uh the first hour of takeover well now it's uh they're going to start 30 minutes earlier so it's a lot more head to head um i don't really think that um takeover i mean mm, i don't think takeover will hurt the AEW number much, but it, it, it will hurt somewhat. Well, if it does, it's going to hurt the 7 o'clock hour and not the pre-show hour here with this match. No, it's, I mean, it. it's something, though, but it's still they're trying to throw competition out there. Um, but yeah, no, that man, I mean, it's not much of a match. It's just, well, I mean, it's the winners get, the, get a shot at, at Imperium for the titles. We got Bronson Reed, Damian Priest, Cameron Grimes, Johnny Gargano, Velveteen Dream ladder match for the vacant NXT North American title. Mm hmm. Yoshiro yeah, I mean, it'll probably be a great match. Um, I would think Damian Priest should be the pick just for something new. Yoshirai Dakota Kai for the NXT women's title. Uh, that should be very good. Adam Perhaps. Cole, Pat McAfee. Triple H said that this match is going to be a sleeper, and Pat McAfee's going to surprise everybody. I think he will. I absolutely believe that, actually. Oh, I'm not suggesting that it's not true. I'm, you know, he's, he's you know, they can lay out a match. He's he's a fan. He's a great athlete. I, people don't want to hear that, but he is. Um, so, I don't, you know, but again, it's his first match. He's also working with Adam Cole, who's a real pro. Um. You know, people think it's going to be a mess. I'm relatively certain it won't be a mess. And Keith Lee, Karrion Cross, Which is interesting. Um, you know, Karrion Cross has the great entrance, and he's got the great look. Um, he knows his character, but it will be interesting because, you know, the expectation of an NXT championship match and history of NXT championship matches are really s spectacular matches. And I haven't seen a cross in anything like that so far. Um, and so we'll see. You know, I mean, I think it's a real test. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Cross wins the title because Cross is clearly being groomed to be the top guy. Um, we'll see what, what he's got when it comes to like, like a 20 minute main event. I mean, if I know anything about this company, Keith Lee is winning this match and then they will shoot an angle to set up a rematch, which Karrion Cross will win to get the title. That could happen too. So the AW show, we've got FTR versus private party. Elite that's a versus weird, that's a weird one because. That's a complete styles clash. Um, we'll, I think it's a real test of FTR. If FTR like gets a, you know, because the Young Bucks got a, a legit great match out of Private Party, and a couple other guys have gotten good matches out of them. So we'll see what FTR can get out of them. Um, I mean, there'll be there'll, there'll be some absolutely spectacular stuff, but I don't know, you know, the match, the match. I mean, we'll see how the match is. It could be could be very good. Elite versus Dark Order. That's uh, what it, um, Alan a is. It Alan Angels and uh, Silver and and uh, Reynolds. Silver and Reynolds are, are are you know they're pretty good. And Angels, you know, for for a, a smaller. I mean, he's a smaller guy, but he can work very well. I mean, you know, Young Bucks and Omega, they always work hard. Um, I think this will be filled with action. Uh, should be. I mean, it, it's weird because it's like if you look at the names on paper. It reads like a glorified squash match in the sense of, you know, Silver and Reynolds have never really been pushed. Angels is Angels, and people don't even know his name. Um, but I think action-wise, it's going to be really good. Yeah, the finals of the Women's Tag Team Tournament. Yep, so that's uh, Brandy, and Al Brandy Rhodes and Allie against Ivelisse and Diamante. Um tournament hasn't been that good although there was a match with um the brandy Rhodes and alley match on um monday it wasn't too bad it was all right but um yeah um i don't think the match will be spectacular or anything like that i got darby allen in action they didn't say who it is yet could be ricky starks 
um because yeah. they were cutting promos if not it's it's like it'll be a squash to build to darby allen and ricky starks on the pay-per-view which actually makes more sense now that i think about it we got lucha brothers and butcher and blade versus the natural nightmares and jurassic express i mean that'll be all action I, i'm sure it'll be really good and cody versus brody for the tnt title which should be good as well should be very good all right, so this UFC show this weekend, the Munoz-Edgar fight is the main event, Pedro Munoz, Frankie Edgar, Bantamweight. Yeah, so we'll see. This is Frankie Edgar's debut at Bantamweight, finally. And he's going against a, a real, you know, real legit top guy. Um, and I mean, it's it's generally speaking, what I've seen when you have these guys get older and cut to a weight class, a cut to a lower weight class, it always sounds good on paper and it rarely is. Because what happens is is that when you get older, you you lose your speed. When you move down in the weight class, you're facing guys faster than you were facing before, not slower. So the speed becomes a real issue. And you're not gonna, oh, like sometimes you think, well, they're smaller guys, so I'll overpower them. And the, what you don't think is is that if you're cutting down to their weight and you're weakening yourself, you weakened is probably not going to overpower them at a more at a closer to their regular weight. Um, Frankie's got all the guts in the world. Um, you know, he's older, so it's, it's going to be a tough fight. It's going to be. Um, I mean, it, you know, the one thing with with Edgar because of his name is that if he gets a big win here, um, you know, he can be in that in that title mix pretty quick. Um, it's a great division too. There's all kinds of talent in that in that division. And really, the only other name fight: Ovin Saint Pru faces Alonzo Minifield in the. Yeah, Alonzo Minifield's looked really good, but he's one of those guys where um, you know it's like the typical guy where he he's very explosive. He comes out and he takes people out in like the first two minutes and looks absolutely spectacular doing so. But if you get past those first two minutes, he becomes very mortal, and then all of a sudden. And that's what we saw in the last fight. He, you know, he he looked like a guy like in his early fights where I'd watch him and go like this guy, you know. I mean, he's he's a guy who could contend for for a championship. And then when you when he moved up in in uh, competition, all of a sudden it's just like, oh man! After two minutes, you know, and he's tired and he can't knock him out anymore. All of a sudden, you see he's he's not really that great. So. Uh, I think I guess the key is if he can finish Ovin Saint Prue quickly. If he can't, um, he's he's in higher he's in higher competition than even before. 